Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to the Titanium Man Garage. And uh, I finally got to the point where I've got this 6x6 Polaris project all done. I got the bugs all worked out, and let me tell you, there was a lot of them. Actually, I'm so excited right now, I, I must have spent like anywhere from 10 to 15 hours bleeding the brakes that I'm going to crack a beer. I'm that excited right now. But, uh, yeah, there were some major issues. The shifter was bad. There's a couple springs in here. Actually, there's two of them. They're still laying down here. Uh, they weren't in the right spot. Um, this thing was filled with water. So that was telling me probably in the winter time it probably froze and the guy probably couldn't shift it. From jamming on the, the transmission, it wrecked the shifter. Carburetor was bad. So I just replaced uh, the carb with a brand new carb. Both master cylinders were bad. This was all rusted tight, so I replaced the master cylinder and the handbrake. Got it off of eBay. Um, the other side I robbed from another four-wheeler. The calipers were seized. Well, this rear caliper, uh, was a pain in my butt. It uh, had a bunch of rust around it. I thought it was rusted tight. I ended up taking it off and uh, using a C-clamp, pushing the piston back. I managed to get everything loose. A normal guy would have took this thing and parted it out. Um, it got so bad that I had to take a guitar wire and shove it through the brake lines because there was so much crap stuck in there that uh, um, it was plugging up the lines. Um, so yeah, let me do a little walk through, show you everything I did. The first thing I did when I bought this thing was I threw a brand new battery in it. Wanted to test the starter, try to kick it over, and I got nothing. The starter solenoid was all rusty and corroded. I ended up having to replace it. Um, I didn't have one on hand at the time, so uh, I ended up uh, trying pull starting it. Well, I took the pull start, pull started it, it fired right up. I'm like, sweet! Uh, I put an auxiliary gas tank on because I didn't trust the, uh, the gas that was in there. It was all brown and nasty smelling, so just hung a auxiliary tank to the carburetor. I'm like, great, I got this thing running. Well, <laughs> didn't end up the way I wanted it to. So I drove it around a little bit, it started spitting, sputtering, and bogging out. So I thought it was the carb at first, and uh, the carb was kind of nasty looking and needed to get replaced, so I replaced the carb. Threw an HO carb on there, that's what was supposed to be on there. Uh, I think the guy had replaced the carb at one point and put a non-HO carb on it. Or he replaced the plastics. I don't know. Uh, it's this 500 HO Sportsman 6x6. So I could still drive it. Uh, low RPMs, uh, it would roll fine, but if I tried to give her gas, she would uh, spit and sputter. So I'm like, alright, maybe it needs a carb clean. And uh, squeezed the hand lever. I noticed the brakes, there were no brakes. And then when I shifted from forward to reverse, I noticed the, the shifter was really wonky. So I took the shifter. I don't know if you guys can see that. I ended up pulling it apart. Now you guys seen this taken apart before. There's a couple springs in here. Actually, there's two of them. They're still laying down here. Uh, they weren't in the right spot. Um, this thing was filled with water. So that was telling me probably in the winter time it probably froze and the guy probably couldn't shift it. It was probably like a Slurpee, you know, all that slushy frozen crap in there from jamming on the, the transmission um, it wrecked the shifter and it uh, also made the uh, the shift lever from the on the transmission a little little sloppy but uh, so I replaced the shifter got the correct one I got that working good well, she shifts like she should so then I got my starter relay hooked up Got all my wires clean, fired it up, and all of a sudden I hear grind, grind, grind. Turns out it was the uh, Bendex gear for the starter that was right behind here. I know a lot of people, they uh, they hear grinding noises. It's not necessarily the engine. A lot of times it could be the clutch rattling. Other times it would be the Bendex gear. Uh, the Bendex gear I had, poof, there it is. The Bendex gear I had, the gears were all ground. This would not go back in. Spring shot. So, lucky for me, I had uh, a couple Bendex gears laying around. Threw that in, and uh, noise went away. I'm like, great. Took her for a drive. 
and it died. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So I pulled the, the wires off of the run stop kill switch and uh, they were pretty green and corroded so I ended up uh, cutting and splicing and rewiring them and also replaced the run stop kill switch and that solved a lot of my problems. Started running smooth and then I got a one spark no spark issue. So immediately I uh, pull the black wire on the CDI. Uh, most guys would have took one look at this thing and probably parted it out. But uh, I'm the type of guy where I'm going to take this thing apart bit by bit and put it all back together, get it running good, bring another one back to life. Um, I believe this is number 60 for me. So uh, what I got going on is I got a one spark, no spark issue. And I've been going through the wires, if uh, you've seen my previous video, um, I had to splice these wires in, they were green. I cleaned the wires coming to here. And now I'm working on the grounds. So as you can see, this is all rusted and corroded. This is where the grounds go. Um, I should really replace this thing. For but I'm gonna try to clean it up. Whoever had this thing must have left it outside because it's uh, getting kind of rusty. So I just gotta go through all the wires, <coughs> the terminals, the grounds. Uh, I did get it to pop and fire. Now I have a one spark, no spark issue. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I got the grounds loose. Uh, pulling out the coil, the spark plug. I should really replace this. I mean, this is all pretty rusty. Um, it still does work um, when you get a one spark, no spark issue. Um, the coil is working. So I'm gonna just try to clean it up, uh, get all the rust off of here. And so it um, gives it a good contact for ground. I clean this up. Um, most of my terminals are kind of crusty and corroded. Um, usually when you get a one spark, no spark issue. Uh, usually it has to do with the CDI or the run stop kill switch. Well, I rewired everything up to the run stop kill switch and I put a, a new switch in. Now down to the coil. This uh, wire down here is pretty corroded. I'm gonna clean that up. I think it's just a lot of corrosion going on and as I'm cleaning things up and trying to start this thing, other things are popping because uh, you know it's kind of like chasing gremlins. You know, I get one thing fixed and it's groaning out up here and it's working like it should and there's power going through it like it should and then all of a sudden, well this is corroded, well that's not working right. So just kind of going through cleaning everything up. I'm banking that CDI is probably bad and I'll show you how I figured that out. Now if you guys don't know what the CDI box is, I'm going to try to get you in here. It is right here, this black box. Um, has a black wire going up to this plug right here and that goes to your kill switch. Run stop kill switch. Um, you also have everything else, you got your ground, you got uh, um, power going everything else. I'm not going to go in detail what this whole thing does, but uh, uh, basically uh, this was all corroded. That goes to the, the kill switch. So I'm thinking that could be part of my problem. Um, and I'll show you why. Alright, so I'll show you what I mean by a no spark issue. Uh, so one spark, no spark, is uh, usually something has to do with your CDI. So I pulled the spark plug out, I put it back in the boot, and let's see. Got the key turned on. Now watch the spark plug. Probably only spark once. You gotta put it on the ground. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, so I can put it somewhere where you can see it. it. Only sparked once. Now, when you come over here, is your CDI. You got your black wire coming up. We're gonna unplug that. I need two hands to do that, so there you go. Black wire is unplugged. Okay, so now <clears throat> I unplug the black wire and we're gonna try this one more time. And I got the fan hot wire, that's what you're hearing. I touch this somewhere. I should get spark. Okay, so I got constant spark. So that tells me there's an issue with the CDI. I figured it out first. Um, 
while I was checking my ground wires, I was cleaning the ground wires, I pulled the plug, I got a no spark issue, cleaned my grounds, put it back together. So that tells me that that is not the spark plug coil, it means that's still good because once I disconnected the black wire, it kept sparking. So the CDI kind of tells uh, the spark plug when to spark. I'm going to have to replace that, but for now I can leave it unplugged. And uh, if you're lucky, sometimes it'll run and shut off with that black wire unplugged. Sometimes you have to plug the black wire back in to shut it off. So it acts like a kill switch. So I guess I'll find out if I need to do that. Alright guys, let me show you what this thing can do. I got it rewired. Uh, I got the new carb on. I end up uh, buying an aftermarket carb. You can hear this bad boy fire up. And I got the shifter working good. Shifts like it should. I'm going to test that out. Oh, spurs like a kit. So what I did, because I had that nasty gas tank, was I uh, hooked up a little auxiliary tank. Going straight into the car, bypasses any tank or fuel pump issues, so uh, I know it's not that. So if I do hook up the fuel pump later on in the fuel tank, I'll know what it is. So I hooked up the black wire, and acted like a kill switch, and shut her down. Now the CDI is down here, it controls your spark. Um, there's a black wire right here going up to the kill switch. A lot of times if you unplug that, and uh, you've got the one spark, no spark issue. If you unplug that, uh, it dis disables the kill switch and you'll get spark constantly. So I did that, got spark constantly, fired it up. She ran good. Um, I came up a with a little trick I want to show you guys. So for my subscribers across the world, Australia, Germany, um, all you guys that can't get parts, I'm going to show you... Uh, a quick fix that I came up with if you got a bad CDI. So your uh, box is down here, your black box. It's your black wire running up. Well, let me disconnect it. So a lot of times if you disconnect this, it'll start and run, but you won't be able to shut it off. The only way to shut the four-wheeler off is to plug this black wire from the CDI back to the switch. If you watch my channel, you know me. I like to come up with uh, interesting ways to, to fix problems. What I ended up doing was I, I took a toggle switch. And uh, you got your terminals here. I hooked up a lead to the terminal. I hooked this side to here. And this side to the kill switch. So now when I want to start it, I'll hit on, I'll turn the key, hit the start button, she'll fire up. When I want to turn it off, I turn the key off, it'll still stay running, and I'll flip the switch, and that'll kill the motor. It's kind of like an auxiliary uh, kill switch. Um, what I did, I did this to one other six-wheeler, uh, I could not... Uh, get it to work right, and I even replaced the CDI, I had another issue. So when I went to sell it, I said it was a, a anti-theft device. Um, nobody knows how to start it. You turn the key, it won't start. Flip the on, she starts. So it worked out pretty slick. But uh, So I had hooked this up, and in the process, I ended up uh, cleaning all of the uh, the terminals by doing it. Um, this was uh, kind of rusty and corroded in here. I thought it was gone. I thought it was a goner. I couldn't clean it up. Well, all of a sudden I go plug the black wire to the CDI to the kill switch and would you know it? All of a sudden she starts up and she stops. So uh, sometimes it's just a little corrosion on your your terminals and your connections and uh, sometimes that's all it takes. This thing must have been sitting for a while because the carb was pretty caked up. Uh, couldn't get it cleaned up decent, saw my issue with the, the jet uh, not being able to come out. Um, so I got brand new carb. So um, I've got a lot of questions about this. 
you know, and people will ask, you know, um, why will my uh, four-wheeler bog out or why won't it start? A couple issues are your fuel lines. When they're about 20 years old, they get really soft. Well, this is a vacuum operated carb with a vacuum operated fuel pump. When it's vacuum operated, it's sucking in gas and pushing it out and uh, your lines could collapse. Well, these are pretty soft, so I'm not gonna take a brand new carb and use old fuel lines because uh, to me that's just like, you know, pouring dirt right into your carb. Um, you know, they get soft, and this one's actually really brittle. Um, you could get uh, little pieces of uh, hose, uh, dirt, old gas. Um, I even contemplating replacing that fuel pump only because uh, uh, I ended up having to clean out the gas tank, and that thing was nasty. Um, I got it sitting over here. I had uh, drained all the old gas out. It was actually brown when it poured out. And uh, what I ended up doing was I took the, uh, the fittings off the bottom. Uh, I just got this on here temporarily, uh, just for cleaning purposes. And uh, I cleaned out the tank. Um, what I ended up using was, um, oh, what did I use? I used a heavy duty degreaser. Um, it's actually used for a pressure washer. I poured that in the tank, swished it around, let it soak for a little bit, uh, poured it out, did it about three or four times, and then uh, that does kind of leave uh, like a soapy, bubbly residue, so I ended up taking some old gas, that, uh, not not the brown stuff, but um, some older gas from another four-wheeler, just threw it back in the tank, swished it around, cleaned everything out. I took my fittings off the bottom here, because there are screens in here, and I blew them all out. They were all full of crap. I could only imagine what my fuel lines look like. So I got myself some uh, brand new fuel line. Um, I went with the uh, high pressure. Uh, it was a little more expensive, only because I wanted it to last. So this is about nine feet, and uh, I think I paid about 40 bucks for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those fuel lines. I'm gonna try to blow air through the pulse pump Make sure it pulses, make sure everything works correctly. Put the clean gas tank on. I'm gonna check that uh, fuel filter because sometimes those get plugged as well. Also keep in mind too, your, uh, um, where are they here? I got them laying here. I don't even know why they put this filter on here because that gets plugged up. And if that gets plugged up, it's gonna uh, make your four wheeler run rough. Uh, so like I said, I'm kind of going through everything. I'm gonna. Just replace the hoses, do everything right, and I wanna make sure this thing runs good for a long time. I got a nice clean carb, let's put uh, all brand new fuel lines in. What's that? Well, I don't see anything out there, there's nothing there. Oh well, I'll finish showing you the rest of what I did. And last but least, um, like I said, I had the brake issues. Um, this was all rusted tight, so I replaced the master cylinder and the handbrake. Got it off of eBay. Um, the other side I robbed from another four-wheeler. I went to bleed the brakes, and uh, they were still pretty soft. And like I said earlier in the beginning, um, the uh, lines were all plugged up with crap, and uh, sometimes they do get water in the lines and they rust, so I ran a guitar string through them. So the reason it took longer, like I said, to bleed at the brakes is because um, you got your front handbrake, would be your uh, left, that goes into the front brakes and also goes into the rear caliper. And then you also have an independent right rear brake that goes straight to the caliper. Well, the issue is I was having as I was getting the, uh, the front brakes tight, and then after it's sitting for a while, the, the brakes would feel all mushy. Well, this rear caliper uh, was a pain in my butt. It uh, had a bunch of rust around it. I thought it was rusted tight. I ended up taking it off and uh, using a C-clamp, pushing the piston back. I managed to get everything loose. And uh, I thought I was gonna break the bleeder screws because it was pretty rusty, but uh, I managed to crack them open and I got all the old fluid out of there. Uh, 
crank, crank the bleeder tight. There's one up here and there's one down here. This is for the uh, independent handbrake. This goes from the uh, front brakes and to the rear as well. So when you squeeze the left side, it, it brakes both front and back at the same time. Um, so I managed to get that all out and then I was trying to get this one to work and I got real tight and it wasn't squeezing tight at all on the caliper. So I ended up taking this uh, line off thinking maybe there's some corrosion in there and uh, nothing came out. The steel line that comes up here ended up to be uh, having some crap stuck in it so I ran a guitar string through there, got it unplugged and boom, I got fluid out everywhere. It was beautiful. Um, all of a sudden I uh, cracked the bleeder screws, bled the uh, back caliper and the front's tightened up real good and when I squeeze when I squeezed the right hand independent brake, that got really tight too. So I'm like, all right, beautiful. Uh, I managed to get that blood. It was a pain in the butt because they bled the front brakes a couple times and uh, I figured this back was, uh, wasn't gonna move at all. So I did monkey with it, but after I couldn't get the front brakes tight, I'm like, all right, I gotta tackle this thing. So I did clean her all up, got her working and now she works good. So it is October and Halloween is coming up so I'd like to wish you guys a happy Halloween. Ah! So here you go folks. Um, total time invested probably somewhere around 50 hours. I said more labor than anything else. Show you how she runs. So you just chalk it up as a labor of love, make some cash off of it, and move on. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the little Halloween trick my son played on me. And like always, till next time.